Well, good morning, Hope College. This morning, our scripture passage comes to us from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. Hear the good news of the Lord. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. And his disciples, when they saw this, they were angry. And they said, why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She does a good service for me. For you have the poor with you always, but you do not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So friends, this morning, I'd like to try something out with you. When reading this passage, I didn't find myself identifying with the faithful woman or, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. But instead, I saw a little too much of myself in those goofy, knuckle-headed disciples. And so, if you'd allow me for just a moment, I'd like to channel my inner disciple and let you in on the conversation that I suppose may be going on inside of them. Who does this woman think she is? Barging in on our dinner like that? Who is she anyway? Where did she get that perfume? And why on earth did she pour it on Jesus' head? We could have sold that perfume, that very costly ointment. We could have gotten a lot of money for it. We could have done a lot with that money. We could have given that money to the poor. That would have been good, I guess. But Jesus, what, what did he just say? That we're the ones bothering her and that she's done a good service for him? We were kind of harsh, weren't we? We get like that sometimes. And then he just said, you always have the poor with you. That sounds a little familiar. Actually, it sounds a lot familiar. Isn't that in the Torah somewhere? I think it's in the book of Deuteronomy. You'll always have the poor with you. You'll always have the poor with you, therefore I command you, open your hands to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. Is Jesus, is this what he's quoting? Is he saying, hey, you'll always have the poor with you, so do something about it? I think maybe Jesus just called us out. Why, why did I get so upset with this woman anyway? Like Jesus said, she just did a good service for him. And I don't really understand what he means when he said that she just prepared him for burial, but I do understand that Jesus must be saying that what she did wasn't wasteful. That maybe it was honoring. Or perhaps even worship. And at the same time, he looked at us and said, you always have the poor with you. And I know the Torah, and so I know that maybe he's saying, 
You always have the poor with you, so you open your hands to the poor and needy person in your community. And even just before that, in the book of Deuteronomy, I remember it saying that there will, however, be no one in need among you if only, if only you were to obey all the commandments and observe the law that I've given you. There would be no one in need among us if only we did these things. So why are there still poor people with us? Jesus is right. It's because we're not observing the law and doing the things that God commanded us. And what did Jesus say not long ago? It seems like maybe four chapters of my life that all of the law and the commandments hang on these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. How are we doing with these two things? I look at this woman standing there next to Jesus with her empty jar. She's loved the Lord her God with all of her everything. And she's loved her neighbor as herself. She's loved Jesus in this radical way. Have I done these things? Have I loved the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, and strength, and my neighbor as myself? Sometimes I don't feel like I'm doing either of those. What does that look like, anyway? I've been with Jesus this whole time, three years, and I haven't learned. There's still so much to learn. What did Jesus say before all this happened? What was he saying when this woman came in? He was telling a story, something like, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then he said to us, if we've done any of these things for the least of these, then we've done them for him. Hmm. We always have the poor with us because we haven't obeyed God. We haven't loved God and we haven't loved our neighbor. Therefore, God has commanded us to open our hands to the poor and needy person in our own land. Maybe that looks like giving food or drink or clothing to those who don't have any. Maybe it looks like welcoming the stranger. Maybe it looks like taking care of those who are sick and visiting those in prison. Maybe it looks like comforting those who desperately need comfort. Maybe I'm called to give away some of my own stuff, give up some of my own time. Maybe it means not judging people like this woman. The poor will always be with us, Jesus said, and it's not supposed to be that way. If only we would love the Lord our God and love our neighbor as ourselves. He said, you'll always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. This woman, she chose the right thing. In the moment, she loved God and her neighbor by giving Jesus this ointment and anointing him before burial. She worshipped him completely. But what am I doing? How can I love God and love my neighbor as myself better, more fully? Friends, if you're anything like me, Emily, 
Sometimes I just miss it. Sometimes we just miss it. Sometimes we just mess things up, and we're going to do that often. Sometimes, actually a lot of the time, I don't love the Lord my God with all my heart and soul and strength, and I definitely don't always love my neighbor as myself. But if you're anything like me or like the disciples, the good news of the gospel is grace. We are always learning and always failing, and Jesus is constantly and gracefully calling us back in. We are called to worship Christ. And part of that worship looks like what this woman was doing, giving all of her everything and praising Christ. And sometimes that worship looks like loving those who need it most, the poor and needy in our midst. Jesus called the disciples out, saying, open your own hands. Open your own hands and your own lives to the poor and needy in your own community. So what are we doing What am I doing? How can I, how can we love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves? Jesus calls us to do these things, both of them. Let us worship Christ with our entire lives. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace.